2023 has seen the death of many great actors, musicians, and entertainers. Let's take a look at their legacies and fascinating lives. As a working character actor, Earl Bowen had a long and productive on-screen career, but he's probably best known for playing criminal psychologist Dr. Peter Silberman in the 1985 sci-fi classic The Terminator, as well as its sequels. Bowen officially retired from the screen in 2003, but kept on voice acting, lending his baritone to video games like World of Warcraft, as well as cartoon series like Kim Possible. Bowen passed away on January 5th at the age of 81 from lung cancer. His Terminator 2 co-star Robert Patrick, who played the villainous T-1000 in the 1991 sequel, expressed his condolences to Bowen's family on X, formerly known as Twitter. Very sad to hear Earl Bowen has passed away. He was a wonderfully gifted actor and a good guy. As a child actor in Los Angeles, Adam Rich won the role of little brother Nicholas in Eight is Enough and stayed on the show from 1977 to 1981. The actor and his distinctive page boy haircut appeared in other TV series as well, like The Love Boat, before going on to do voice acting in projects like Dungeons and Dragons in the 80s. As a young adult, Rich ran into trouble with drugs and was arrested in 1991 for trying to rob a pharmacy. He revealed to people that he had nearly died from a Valium overdose, saying, what I've been been through is impossible to understand unless you've been there. Rich chose to stay out of the spotlight in recent years, and his last acting credits came in 2003 when he played himself in the David Spade movie Dickie Roberts, former child star. In 2021, he expressed his appreciation to fans of Eight is Enough on Instagram, saying, I'm grateful for the joy felt while working on Eight. I do hope it may have brought you some joy as well. Rich died on January 7th at the age of 54. Lisa Loring was cast as the original Wednesday Addams in the classic sitcom The Addams Family when she was only six years old and won over the show's fans with her character's adorable love of the weird and strange. After the show was canceled in 1966, she had a whirlwind marriage and became a mother at 16. Loring took a break from acting but later popped up as Wednesday in a 1977 Halloween Addams Family special before appearing as Cricket Montgomery in the long-running soap opera As the World Turns. Her friend, Lori Jacobson, announced on Facebook that Loring died at age 64 on January 28th, following a stroke, she wrote. She is embedded in the tapestry that is pop culture and in our hearts always as Wednesday Adams. Beautiful, kind, a loving mother, Lisa's legacy in the world of entertainment is huge, and the legacy for her family and friends, a wealth of humor, affection, and love, will long play in our memories. After a turbulent marriage at age 16, Stella Stevens turned to acting, landing her first minor role as a backup singer in Say One For Me with Bing Crosby and Debbie Reynolds. It earned her a Golden Globe for New Star of the Year in 1960. She also became one of Playboy's favorite models, appearing in the magazine throughout the 60s. Her film career saw her star opposite Elvis in his musical comedy Girls, 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 and Jerry Lewis in his classic screwball comedy The Nutty Professor, before joining a cast of legends in the 1972 disaster flick The Poseidon Adventure. Her son Andrew told CNN that Stevens passed away on February 17th at the age of 84 from Alzheimer's. He said, Alzheimer's is an insidious disease which affected not only my mother, but my grandmother and great aunt. Hopefully, my mother's work will be remembered for her collaborations with some of the entertainment industry's biggest icons. Jansen Panettiere first burst onto our screens as a child star in TV shows like Even Stevens and provided voice acting for animated projects like The Exes. While still a child, he also got to act opposite his older sister Hayden Panettiere in her 2004 Disney TV movie Tiger Cruise. He also starred in the 2014 film The Martial Arts Kid. Tragically, Panettiere passed away suddenly on February 19th at the age of 28 from what was later revealed to be an enlarged heart, a source told ET. Hayden is absolutely heartbroken. She loved her brother unconditionally, and the two shared a special bond. He's uh, right here with me. Uh, always. Best known for her role as Nurse Abel on MASH, Judy Farrell appeared on the military sitcom from 1976 to 1983 alongside her first husband, Mike Farrell, who played Captain B.J. Honeycutt on the show. In addition to other TV roles, Judy ended up in the writer's room of the ABC soap opera Port Charles, which was a spin-off of General Hospital from 1998 to 2003. Farrell passed away at the age of 84 on April 4th, following a stroke. Her MASH co-star Loretta Swit told Entertainment Weekly, Judy was a most beautiful woman, inside and out. We grew up together. She was family. This has been a painful loss, but we will always have the beauty of her memory. 
Perhaps best known as Althea Davis on the soap opera The Doctors, Elizabeth Hubbard had an acting career that spanned five decades on stage and screen. She also had a tenure on As the World Turns as the ruthless Lucinda Walsh from 1975 to 2010. A longtime favorite of the daytime Emmys, she received their first ever lead actress award and received eight nominations for her work as Lucinda alone. In 2010, she reflected on her career in an interview with TV Guide, saying, I've been very lucky in this thing called daytime, first with Dr. Althea on The Doctors and then with Lucinda. Two smart career women, both of them ladies who made their own way in the world. Hubbard died of cancer at age 89 on April 8th. Her son Jeremy announced Hubbard's death on his Facebook page, stating that his heart was broken by the loss. Thank you for being an unmovable rock that guided me through life. I will try to honor your memory for as long as I live. Comedian Barry Humphreys achieved international fame as his outlandish and snobbish alter ego, Dame Edna Everidge, whose distinctive wig and glasses appeared on the stage as well as in TV and films. Over his seven decades in show business, he appeared in films like Finding Nemo as The Shark Bruce and The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. Humphreys died on April 22nd at age 89, following complications from a recent hip replacement. His family said in a statement, he was completely himself until the very end, never losing his brilliant mind, his unique wit, and generosity of spirit. He was also a loving and devoted husband, father, grandfather, and a friend and confidant to many. His passing leaves a void in so many lives. Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese also released a statement about the impact that Humphreys had on his home country, calling him someone who entertained us through a galaxy of personas. He's irreplaceable. I mean, what an absolute comic genius. I mean, he's the, the greatest comic since Charlie Chaplin, I would say. Singer and activist Harry Belafonte found success through hit singles like the Calypso song Deo, the Banana Boat song, and Jump in the Line, Shake Sonora. The star was soon receiving film offers and broke down barriers in Hollywood with movies like Island in the Sun. He even became the highest paid black performer in American history and eventually joined the pantheon of EGOT honorees by achieving recognition from the Tony Awards, the Emmys, the Oscars, and the Grammys. But Belafonte arguably had even more impact as an activist. He protested against segregation, supported Martin Luther King Jr. and his family, and spoke out against American interventionism. He said, My activism always existed. My art gave me the platform to do something about the activism. I've always been opposed to injustice. Uh, having been a victim of it. I've always been for women's rights. Harry Belafonte died from congestive heart failure on April 25th in his Manhattan home. He was 96. President Joe Biden tweeted, Jill and I are saddened by the passing of a groundbreaking American who used his talent and voice to help redeem the soul of our nation. After winning a drama school scholarship in her youth, Glenda Jackson became a respected stage actor before appearing in films like Ken Russell's Women in Love in 1969 and A Touch of Class in 1973. She won an Oscar for both roles. Despite her success, however, Jackson's political beliefs led her to quit acting and become a member of parliament for the Labour Party, representing her North London constituency from 1992 to 2015. In her later years, Jackson went back to her Shakespearean roots by playing King Lear in 2016. Two years later, she won a Tony for her performance in Edward Albee's Three Tall Women. Sir Jonathan Price declared her the greatest actor that this country has ever produced. Jackson passed away on June 15th at the age of 87. Tributes poured in from both the acting world and the political realm, with former British Prime Minister Tony Blair tweeting, Glenda brought the same great passion to her political life as she did in her long and glorious acting career. The Netflix series Bling Empire follows wildly rich East Asian and Asian American friends living extravagantly in Los Angeles, with star Anna Shea appearing in three seasons. She also became one of the most distinctive characters on the show with her glamorous outfits, explosive feuds, and extraordinary wealth, which stems from her father's involvement in establishing a global contractor for American defense services. Shea told People, I wasn't even expecting to be in front of the camera. I'm very shy and I went along with whatever situation was happening. I was just being me. Shay died suddenly from a stroke on June 1st at the age of 62. Her castmate, Kim Lee, said, I have so much love for Anna. There's no one like Anna Shay. She's an incredible and unique person who is beloved by so many people. Canadian singer-songwriter Gordon Lightfoot became famous in the 70s with songs like If You Could Read My Mind, and his work was covered by other artists like Bob Dylan, Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, 
Barbara Streisand, and Eric Clapton. But he may be best known for his haunting ballad, The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, which reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 chart in 1976. Lightfoot died on May 1st at the age of 84 of natural causes. The folk icon had been dealing with some health issues over the years and was previously in a coma for six weeks in 2002 after a life-threatening aortic aneurysm. Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called him one of the country's best artists writing on X. Gordon Lightfoot captured our country's spirit in his music, and in doing so, he helped shape Canada's soundscape. May his music continue to inspire future generations, and may his legacy live on forever. Gordon Lightfoot lives in our blood. He's the soundtrack to some of the greatest and most beautiful memories. Actor Alan Arkin enjoyed a long career, which included earning an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor as Grandpa Edwin Hoover in 2006's Little Miss Sunshine, one of the most beloved roles in his career. Along with his notable turns in Edward Scissorhands and Argo, Arkin most recently starred alongside Michael Douglas in Netflix's The Kaminsky Method which landed him an Emmy nomination in both 2019 and 2020. Yet, while Arkin was celebrated for his acting achievements, the Second City veteran found joy in silence and solitude in his golden years. In 2020, he told The Guardian, Beethoven used to be a heroin injection for me, jazz the same. The great novels the same. I could not conceive of going through a day without reading great literature or listening to great music. Now it's mostly an assault, living in silence, looking at the garden, having a relationship with trees and flowers and the sky. That's what's profound to me now. When confronted with the notion that it sounded like he was preparing for the end, Arkin imparted his unique wisdom. There is no end. There was no beginning and there is no end. We are all a part of that endless flow. After suffering from heart trouble, Arkin passed away on June 29th at the age of 89. Ron Cephas Jones was best known for his portrayal of William Hill, Randall Pearson's biological father, on the hit NBC drama This Is Us. For his impeccable delivery, Jones received four Emmy nominations, winning twice. He told Today that the role opened doors for him that had been closed for decades. It gave me a chance to show people my level of work, so I'm getting work because of my work as opposed to trying to toil. It took a little while, but it paid off in the end. In 2021, Jones opened up about undergoing a lung transplant after receiving a pulmonary disease diagnosis. He told the New York Times, It still was a very difficult and arduous recovery. I'm recovering for the rest of my life. Jones passed away due to complications from pulmonary disease on August 19th at the age of 66. A representative for the actor told People, Throughout the course of his career, his warmth, beauty, generosity, kindness, and heart were felt by anyone who had the good fortune of knowing him. A multi-award winning artist, legendary singer Tony Bennett came into the limelight in the early 50s when he released his debut single, Because of You. However, he is best known for 1962's I Left My Heart in San Francisco, a song that eventually earned him a spot in the Grammy Hall of Fame. Bennett garnered two Emmy Awards and 19 Grammys, including a Lifetime Achievement honor, throughout his decades-long career. Despite his many accolades, though, Bennett found fulfillment in the simpler things. In 2016, he told Forbes, Personally, my four children and seven grandchildren are what make me proud. In 2021, Bennett's wife Susan Benedetto revealed to AARP magazine that he had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Despite that, though, he remained his cheerful self. He'd tell me, Susan, I feel fine. That's all he could process. That physically, he felt great. So nothing changed in his life. Anything that did change, he wasn't aware of. He woke up happy every day, even if he had had a bad day or not. You know, he didn't remember it. That was the only blessing. Bennett passed away on July 21st at the age of 96. After starting his media career in the 50s, Bob Barker landed his role as the host of The Price is Right in 1972. He would go on to host the show for 35 years, during which he received 19 Emmys, while also famously appearing as himself in the hit 1996 comedy movie, Happy Gilmore. You want a piece of me? I don't want a piece of you. I want the whole thing! In 2007, Barker announced his retirement, handing over the reins to Drew Carey. He told People, I had the pleasure of working with a dedicated and talented casting crew for 35 great years. Particularly close to my heart was the ability our vast popularity gave me to remind our entire audience daily about the importance of spaying and neutering your pets. In recent years, Barker had experienced several health issues. In 2017, the television host suffered a head injury after suffering a fall at home and was subsequently hospitalized. 
Similarly, in 2018, Barker was hospitalized after experiencing severe back pain. Barker died of natural causes on August 26th at the age of 99. His publicist said in a statement, It is with profound sadness that we announce that the world's greatest MC who ever lived, Bob Barker, has left us. Beloved singer Jimmy Buffett began his musical career in 1970 when he released his debut single, Down to Earth. However, it was not until 1977, when he released Margaritaville, that Buffett gained widespread popularity. Margaritaville became somewhere many aspired to be, with some even thinking it was a real place. Buffett revealed in 2021 that it was, in fact, a metaphor. There was no such place as Margaritaville. It was a made-up place in my mind, basically made up about my experiences in Key West and having to leave Key West and go on the road to work and then come back and spend time by the beach. It's basic, pure escapism from the humdrum and the dull routine of normal day life. Margaritaville was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 2016, but Buffett experienced even more success in his personal life. The iconic singer was married to his wife, Jane Slagsville, for 40 years and was a proud father to three kids. Buffett died on September 1st at the age of 76 from what was later reported to be a rare form of skin cancer. A statement posted on his website read in part, Jimmy passed away peacefully on the night of September 1st, surrounded by his family, friends, music, and dogs. He lived his life like a song till the very last breath and will be missed beyond measure by so many. Steve Harwell served as the lead singer of Smash Mouth from 1994 to 2021 when he announced his retirement due to his long-term health problems. In his 27-year tenure with the group, they sold over 10 million records, earning multiple entries on the Billboard 200 Albums chart as well as five top 40 singles. Harwell and his first wife, Michelle LaRocque, experienced a terrible tragedy when their son Presley died from acute lymphocytic leukemia at just six months old in 2001. In 2013, Harwell, who suffered from alcoholism, was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy and later received treatment for the acute neurological condition Wernick encephalopathy. After retiring from the band in 2021 due to ongoing health issues, it was announced on September 3rd that he had entered hospice care. Harwell passed away on September 4th from liver failure at the age of 54. Smash Mouth's band manager, Robert Hayes, issued a statement that read in part, Steve's legacy will live on through the music.